aim 2,000 light years away. This test so far has undoubtedly surpassed all expectations. The commissioning and the main stages of the JWST just kicked off yet another phase. Which stage is it? Does this mean this project is successful? Find out by watching this video. Also, if you enjoy James Webb content, consider subscribing or giving me a like. These videos take a lot of time to make, and only a small percentage of my viewers are subscribed. It's free, and you can always unsubscribe. The James Webb Space Telescope has reportedly captured its very first image, and it revealed that its instruments would like the perfect vision into yet unseen depths of the old universe. NASA unveiled the first image captured by the JWST on Wednesday, 16th of March 2021, which was a test shot and not part of a scientific study to witness the space telescope's 18 hexagonal and yellow mirrors synced into collaboration. But still, the test tells what this powerful piece of technology can do when pointed at a star about 1 million miles away from Earth. The JWST captured the image in February 2022, but the consequences will continue to make waves for decades and perhaps centuries. NASA scientists were ecstatic when they got a glimpse of the test photos that captured the light of a star 100 times fainter than the human eye, 2,000 light years away from our planet. The JWSP's mirrors, combined with the filters that tinted the distant star's light into a spiky red figure, created the image. However, the highlight of the image wasn't the foreground, and behind the spiky star, thousands of distant galaxies loomed mysteriously, highlighting its unrealized potential of web. Engineers say they have now entirely focused the $10 billion observatories on a test star. The pin sharp performance is even better than they thought. To get to this, all of Webb's mirrors had to be set to small fractions of about the width of a human hair. However, the agency cautions that a lot of work still lies ahead before the telescope can be declared operational. Lee Feinberg, the NASA engineer who has also led the development of Webb's optical elements, described the release of the first adequately focused picture as phenomenal. Webb has been billed as the successor of the famous Hubble Space Telescope, which was launched on the 25th of December by an Ariane 5 rocket from the French Guiana. Its overcharging targets are to take images of the first stars to shine in the universe and probe far off planets to see if they might be habitable. Now to give Webb the necessary resolution and sensitivity to fulfill this mission, it was equipped with a 6.5 wide primary mirror. However, this reflecting surface, made up of almost 18 segments, is so big that it had to be folded to go inside the nose cone of the Aryan. Since launch, initial tasks have been dominated by the requirement to unpack the mirror and other optics and get them all working in harmony. Each of those 18 segments has had its orientation and curvature adjusted by small motors, enabling them to behave like a single monolithic surface. On the 11th of March, Webb's team completed the alignment stage, known as fine phasing. At this crucial stage in the commissioning of Webb's optical telescope element, every optical parameter tested and checked is performing above or at expectations. The Webb team also found no critical issues and no measurable contaminations or blockages to Webb's optical path. The observatory can successfully gather light from distant objects and send it to its instruments without issue. Even though there are months to go before Webb ultimately delivers its new view of the cosmos, Gaining this milestone means that the team is confident that Webb's first-of-its-kind optical system is working as well as possible. Now, over the next six weeks, 
the web team will continue through the remaining alignment steps before its final science instrument preparations. The web team will further align the telescope to include the near-infrared spectrograph, near-infrared imager, mid-infrared instrument, and slitless spectrograph. In this phase of the process, the algorithm will evaluate the performance of each instrument and then calculate the final corrections needed to achieve a well-aligned telescope across all science instruments. Webb's final alignment step will begin and the team will adjust any minor residual positioning errors in the mirror segments. Moreover, NASA's Space Launch System has finally reached the pad, although an actual launch is still some ways off. The SLS rockets and the Orion spacecraft arrived at Kennedy Space Center's launch pad 39B for the first time on March 18 for one last test before the delayed and uncrewed Artemis 1 mission to the moon. The team will have a wet dress rehearsal that duplicates the mission short of its liftoff, including the countdown procedures, propellant load, and draining tanks. The test will help NASA set a target launch date for Artemis 1. The SLS will not stay out for very long, as the agency aims to roll it back to the vehicle assembly building after the test. From there, crews will remove rehearsal sensors, top up batteries, and add late load cargo and conduct final checks. The rocket will then return to the launch pad a week before the actual launch, tentatively slated for May or later. The initial deployment still marks a few important milestones. NASA officially started the development of the SLS in 2011 and has spent over $23 billion on the project in roughly 10 years. The launchpad rollout shows the investment is finally bearing fruit. It is also an important moment for Orion, edging closer to crewed flights. More importantly, the arrival signals that the next chapter of NASA's exploratory mission begins. The SLS won't only be used for Artemis testing, but it's expected to serve as NASA's primary deep space exploration launcher in the 2020s. As crucial as private rockets like SpaceX's Starship may be, the SLS will likely carry the most historic missions in the years ahead. At the same time, SpaceX seems to have started testing a fully stacked Starship rocket for the first time. Even though the test SpaceX subjected Starship to was by no means ambitious, and even though it no longer appears that Booster 4 and Ship 20 will ever fly, the initial test of the very first fully integrated prototype of a new rocket is still a massive achievement. Standing tall at 119 meters, the Starship is unequivocally the largest voluminous rocket ever built. With 29 Raptor V1 engines, the fully assembled Ship 20 and Booster 4 stack would have likely weighed around 4,000 to 5,000 tons and been able to produce around 5,000 tons of thrust at liftoff, substantially heavier and more powerful than N1 or Saturn V the enormous rockets ever successfully and unsuccessfully launched. Although SpaceX appears to have put Starship through a relatively limited cryogenic proof for its first fully integrated test. In the test, flammable fuel is replaced with a similarly cryogenic fluid that's similar enough to subject a rocket to thermal and mechanical stresses. More importantly, Ship 20 completed several static fire tests, which also functioned as a wet dress rehearsal. With LCH-4 LOX propellant, Booster 4 had also passed several cryogenic proof tests. This way, it's unlikely that SpaceX had a great deal of uncertainty whether the prototype would be able to complete yet another test. Also, the European Space Agency has suspended its ExoMars mission, a joint project with Russia that was due to launch a robotic rover. 
the member states of the ESA voted on Thursday to cancel the launch due to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Agency director Joseph Ashbacher said, The decision was made that this launch cannot happen, given the current circumstances and especially the sanctions that are imposed by our member states. This makes it practically impossible, but also politically impossible, to have a launch of the rover in September. The Mars rover, known as Rosalind Franklin, was assembled in the UK for a planned launch on board Russian rocket. After traveling to Mars on a German-built spacecraft, a Russian lander would have been shepherded to the surface. Instead, the rover will be placed in storage for the foreseeable future. The decision was viewed as inevitable, but was a significant blow to Europe's space program. Based on the alignment of Mars and Earth, the next available launch window will be 2024. But the political and technical issues may take longer than this to resolve. The rover was intended to drill two meters into the surface of Mars to look for signs of life. There are no comparable missions in 2030, and the rover should remain viable for several years in storage. But keeping the mission alive is most likely to add significantly to its more than $1 billion price tag. Also, earlier this week, NASA confirmed that one of its astronauts will still share a ride back from the ISS along with two cosmonauts aboard their Soyuz capsule later this month. What are your thoughts on this? Comment Space Telescope down below if you think this is something super exciting. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be the first to see new videos. I cover all of the latest news about the future of technology. See you again soon in another video.